One of the things that happens a lot in the in the summertime is in regards to individual players getting better with individual skills. I know we get a chance to talk to Trey lately and later today, and he seems like he's worked very hard on on better shooting form from three point range and such. Can you talk a little bit about his improvements there and what all went into that during the course of the summer? Well, I mean, he thought he had to expand his game a little bit in terms of shooting threes and. Um, Hey, he hadn't shot one yet. So, you know, I mean. I'm sorry, Mike. Trey, Trey Galloway. Are you talking about Trey Galloway? I thought yeah. you were talking about Trace. Okay. No. Uh, well, he has worked. I mean, he's put a lot of time in, in terms of shooting the three ball. And a lot of these guys have. You know, I look at what Miller's done. Um, again, I mean, the only way you're going to make them is you got to put time in the gym. And they've spent a lot of time this summer. Um, and, you know, it's starting to pay off. I mean, Trey, Trey's shot looks totally different than last year. I mean, his free throws look different. I mean, he's and he's and he's healthy. I mean, that guy was kind of beat up last season. And because of the fact that he plays so hard, you know, he, he took some bumps. And, and it's been a while to get him back on the floor. But now he's back and he's, and he's playing pretty well for us. Mike and Todd. Yeah. Hey coach. I wanted to ask you about Trey Galloway also just kind of expanding on that. You know, he worked his way into your starting five last year. So I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot you like about his game. I, I was hoping you could talk about the, the things that you, you like about his game. And if he does become a consistent three point shooter, I mean, how, how valuable is he to this team? Well, he was valuable last year and I can't help but think he's going to be valuable for us this year. This year, so you know, so early into the season, but listen, the guy plays hard. That's a big part of it. I mean, um, you know, it, it it helps that he can make shots now. He's you know he's confident enough to knock the the three ball down, but he just makes basketball plays and he plays hard. And playing hard for me trumps a lot of things. I mean, uh, that's what I look at first and foremost. You know, how's your motor and he. He's got a high motor in terms of how he plays. So, you know, when he's doing all the things we've asked him to do on the floor, you know, he'll be out there getting minutes. Todd and Alec. Mike, Xavier uh, has a couple of bigs who can spread the floor, and not just shooting-wise, uh, distributing the ball. A lot of their action has come off the elbow, back free mantle in particular. Uh, what principles does your defense need to uh, follow tomorrow to account for that? Well, again, they, you know, we haven't played too many bigs that, you know, the, the last big that we played was Michigan's big that can, you know, make shots out on the floor. Big Jack can make shots out on the floor. And so in transition, you know, we can't get so sucked in to the point where he's trailing and he just trails right into three-point shots. He made a couple of those the other night in their game. So we just got to be alert to that. and. And, you know, the big fella, Zach, you know, I mean, he does a lot of things out on the floor, but he mainly does a lot of his damage around the bucket. So, I mean, we just got to, hey, we got our hands filled with two bigs that we got to match with our bigs with the energy and see what happens. Alec and Zach. Yeah, hey, Coach, kind of piggybacking off of the defensive topic there. Uh, obviously, this year you have two guards in your backcourt and Xavier and Jalen who – are very good on the defensive end of the floor. What does that do for your defensive unit as a whole, just to kind of take it to the next level? And just how important is that to continue the success that you had defensively last year? Well, it's very important. I mean, whenever you can put some heat on the ball as the ball's coming up the floor to kind of slow or disrupt, you know, their early offense, your opponent's early offense, it helps. Uh, Xavier was pretty much the only guy that can do that last year. And, and now we've gotten Tamar Bates comfortable. We've gotten Galloway comfortable. Um, Jalen's comfortable now, you know, where we can extend our defense a little bit, but make no mistake about it, Xavier has some great guards. They, they got good guard play and solely and, and, uh, Jones out front, you know, they, those guys are all pretty good basketball players and they play hard. So, I mean, 
the guy Adams, number five, that comes off the bench, he might start. He started, I think, last year for them. They got solid players. So, you know, it's individual matchups all around the floor. I mean, nobody has a night off is kind of how I look at it. Zach and Tyler? Mike, I guess going back to just sort of the idea of the front court matchup here, from your perspective or on your end, Trace and Race are guys that I imagine you know well. They have had long careers. But how have Malik and Jordan, both their individual skills and the way they play together in that sort of second unit time when they're on the floor together, how has that changed what you can do, the way you can attack an opposing front court maybe in ways that you might not have been able to last year? Well, again, it doesn't give – you know, we don't have any drop-offs. And, again, guys, it's early. It's two, it's two games we've played. Uh, and if you want to count the four, the other two exhibition games, um, you know, I like our second unit. There's no doubt about that. And if they continue to play at a high level like they're playing, man, it just makes us that much better as a basketball team. I just didn't have that last year. And there's no knock against the guys that we had. They gave us all they could give us, and and that was good enough for us to uh, to get to 21 wins and get in the tournament play. But, uh, you know, we got to be better than that this year. And, you know, I think our bench has got to play a major role in what we do. Um, you know, I, if you follow me over the years as a coach in the NBA, my bench was always pretty good. And I've always felt that the bench is just as important as the guys that start the game because sometimes they're not going to have it. And if the bench is there consistently for you, it, it makes you a better ball club. Tyler than Zion. Hey, Coach. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, something that's kind of come up in the past, I guess, is just your emphasis on, on making sure that the guys are having fun when they're playing. And obviously that's not everything, but – um, why, why is it important for, for them to have fun while playing? Well, I mean, have you ever played sports? Yes, sir. Did you have fun when you were playing? Most of the time, I would say yes. Okay, well, then I think anytime you play sports, you should have fun. Why do it? I mean, you know, why are you doing it if you're not trying to have fun? I want my guys to have fun, but with the understanding that there's a lot of work behind having fun. There's a time to have fun and there's a time not to have fun. But when you're practicing and trying to prepare and get ready for games, it's all about work, man. I mean, you got to be serious about what you're doing. And then the the end results is if you win, then you have fun. I mean, that's what it's all about to me. I mean, this this career and what we do is a short-lived career. You know, they have, these four years will come and go for these guys, and then now they got to figure out the next step. Be sure I want them to have fun. And I think most of these guys are. I think they all are having fun. I would like to think, you know, we're 2-0 and and we're playing pretty good basketball. Let's see. Let's see where it leads. Zion and Mason. Coach, the Centaur Center is a, a wild, ruckus environment. And for your freshmen, this is going to be their first road game of their career. How do you go about preparing them to play in a place like that? Well, you know, after our Bethune game, you know, the first thing I said before we broke huddle, because um, I'm thinking about the next game now. You know, I, you know, the Bethune game was what it was. You know, we had a chance to come back and break the film down and watch it. Um, but, you know, the road is different. You know, I mean, it's, you know, if you learn to handle your business and play well on the road, then it becomes contagious. Uh, but you got to do all of the necessary things to win on the road. It's, it's not easy winning on the road. And, you know, you can't turn it over, you know, where we had problems early last season. You know, we were in a, every road game and led in a lot of the road games, but our turnovers cost us early on. Um, key rebounds here and there, a missed defensive assignment here and there. You know, those are all the things that, you know, we have to clean up this year to be a great team on the road. I mean, because again, you know, when you, when you go, you, when you go into these arenas, those guys, they feel good about themselves too. You know, they're at home now and, you know, and, and now you got to make them uncomfortable. And so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see where we are, you know, going into 
tomorrow night's game because uh, we're going to have to be a good road team in order to get where we need to go. And Mason and Wilson? Coach, kind of following up on that, with last year's struggles on the road being so forefront on the mind, do you kind of look to the veterans to kind of get those young guys ready as well with them having the experience of playing in hostile environments like that? Well, again, I think everybody's got to be ready. But, yeah, you kind of – you hope to lean on your uh, – excuse me a minute. I got to call you right back. Uh, uh, you hope to lean on um, – your veterans, because, you know, they've been around and, you know, they've been out on the road, like you said, in, in, in environments like that. And, uh, you know, it's it could be kind of nerve wracking for some of these young guys. So, it's, like I said, I'm interested to see who steps up and who's ready to play and see where we are. All right. Wilson, last one. Mike, uh, having over a week off between games, just wondering how can you benefit from that from that long stretch and what did you work on over the past week well again we you know we were a little banged up um but you know we got a chance to put a few things in and and start you know preparing for xavier and miami Ohio. i mean we got them a day apart so i mean it's you know the games are going to start to come quickly uh you know, it's going to be important that our guys, you know, get rest, proper rest and their mental approaches is, is on target, man, because, you know, when these games start coming, you can't run from them. I mean, we got to be mentally as well as physically ready to go.